Okay guys, it's expense report time. Ivana and I just finished up 17 days in South Korea and they were 17 jam-packed days. South Korea is a little bit more expensive than what we're used to, so we did a lot in our time. We didn't have any days off just sitting in the hostel watching the sun go by. We really kept busy. Go, 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 go. We did a lot. We ended up spending 850 US dollars total for two people in 17 days. It works out to $175 per person per week. So if you're interested in traveling South Korea and you're gonna have a budget-friendly, kind of extreme budget-friendly travel, $175 a week is what you can expect. Um, and we do have some good tips in this video about how to keep the budget down, things we learned from our travel. So here's our entire expense report, ordered most expensive to least expensive, obviously the most expensive accommodations, the same in every country. We spent on average $7 per person per night, which is really good, I think. To be clear, we were staying in the cheapest hostels we could find, and we were there in January, which is like low season, so it wasn't too busy. But for the most part, we had what's called a shared dormitory, which is basically a big room with a bunch of bunk beds in it. We did have a few experiences of the private room shared bath, because for two people, it was cheaper to get the private room compared to two bunk beds. But we had a great experience at Korean hostels. If you're not a you know hostel person, because you think they're kind of crowded and dirty. I can tell you that Korean hostels are super clean, super safe, super organized and quiet. Um, we had an absolutely five-star experience at every hostel we stayed at. They're all throughout all the big cities. So we were in Seoul for one week. We stayed at three different hostels. We were in Busan at one week. We ended up staying in three different hostels again. Whatever we wanted to do the next day, go get a hostel near that area of town. Cheap, reliable, safe, clean. Would absolutely recommend the hostels. So the next big uh, expenditure, obviously restaurants. Now, to be clear, if you want to have a restaurant experience every night, you'll spend way more than what we spent. We decided to have one experience of all the things we wanted. So we had Korean fried chicken and beer once. We had Korean hot pot, which was incredible once. We had a Korean barbecue once. We had some seafood once. Um, those plates are like 15 or $20 per plate. So for our budget, it's really quite expensive. The majority of the restaurants we ate at were like six or seven dollars per plate. Locally owned, small restaurants, um, unlimited kimchi, which is really great. You get your bowl of soup or maybe your meat and rice and they give you unlimited kimchi, six or seven dollars, can't go wrong. Now, the public transport in South Korea is like world class. You can access the entire country safe, clean, reliable, on time. It seems like all the trains are brand new as well. Really kind of unbelievable. We would recommend getting a T-Money card, which is a little plastic card. You charge it up by putting money onto it. Ivana and I explored Seoul and Busan and had a little temple stay in Gyeongju, a small town kind of in between Seoul and Busan. And we did that all for 120 US dollars. Really, really great. Would absolutely recommend the T-Money card. It's also really amazing how cheap all the activities are in South Korea. There are countless markets for you to wander through that are free to enter, You're just wandering through seafood markets, shopping markets, indoor markets. There are underground malls you can go check out. If you don't want to do any shopping, you can just go look at these underground malls that are really great. They also have a bung culture. Bung means room. So they have all these rooms that are like one or two dollars and you get to go act silly and have fun in them. We did the photo booth room, which is really great. They put costumes, you know, you choose your own costume, put it on and, and go have fun. We did the karaoke room, which was really hilarious. After we had some beers, we went and had some karaoke for two dollars, spent an hour and a half in there. We did a couple arcades, silly games you can play for a dollar. We also did the Jim Jill Bung which is a Korean bathhouse. That one was a little bit more expensive, like six or seven dollars. A pro tip here would be to spend the night in the Korean bathhouse. We paid six or seven dollars for the Korean bathhouse. Then we left the Korean bathhouse and paid six or seven dollars on a hostel, which was a little bit silly. In hindsight, we could have spent the night at Jim Jo Bung. Uh, but all the activities are remarkably cheap. We went ice skating for two dollars. A couple hours of ice skating outside in Korea was really, really great. So in terms of the activities, most of them are very, very cheap. The big number here is we did participate in a temple stay program, which we would absolutely recommend. It was in Gyeongju. We spent two days there uh, living like monks. So we were meditating and chanting and eating silently. It was really, really worth it. 
that particular experience was like 50 US dollars each. So if you take away $100 from our activities budget, we spent almost no money on activities. Really, really affordable, and we had a total blast. It was really, really great. Now, in terms of shopping, because of these markets and these malls that you go check out, you're kind of obliged to buy something. There's so much action going on, it's really, really great. Ivana bought a bunch of clothes. Korean fashion is like, you know, amazing to her. So she bought a hat, she bought some jeans, she bought some bandanas. I actually bought a pair of shoes that were uh, a terrible purchase. They broke immediately. But for the most part, the quality in Korea is really, really good. Um, for the shopping category, you can kind of maybe use this as like your souvenirs category. If you're going to Korea, you'll probably want to bring some stuff back. It's got such a unique culture and so much shopping going on that you'll probably be spending some money on souvenirs. And then our final category, this is how we save so much money at restaurants. We had a ton, like at least once a day, probably more like twice a day, uh, instant ramen. I know it sounds corny, you go all the way to a different country, somewhere so amazing like South Korea, and you eat so much ramen, but it's kind of a cultural thing, these instant noodles. They have like a gazillion flavors of instant noodles. We found our favorites. There's a pink one that's carbonara flavored. We were like enamored by this one. We would go to the grocery store, buy a bunch of ramen, buy a bunch of broccoli and cauliflower and maybe a sausage, slice it all up and cook it together. Um, you can get your meals down to like two or three American dollars per meal if you're eating ramen. So that's how we kept the budget so low. Again, if you want to go to those restaurants, I can see why. They're so incredible, these really nice experiences, but they're just outside of our budget. So we would have at least once a day ramen. All in all, I think we did a really good job of budget traveling Korea. We did a lot. We saw a lot. Every day we were exploring the big cities like Seoul and Busan, they're just so interesting to walk around. They're just so efficient and it's kind of mind blowing how, you know, there's like 10 million people in the city and yet the streets are like empty because there's a whole nother city underground. So we were constantly walking around, meeting people, talking to people. We had a small group of friends with us. We had such a blast in Korea. And we really think that 175 US dollars per person per week is pretty fantastic. We're pretty proud of that number. If you're forecasting your own trip to South Korea, I would say somewhere in the range of $200 a week would be a good, good job you did saving money. Um, you can certainly spend a lot more than that. There's really unique experiences, really amazing food. But if you're looking for budget travel, 175, maybe 200 US dollars per person per week um, would be a good target to shoot for. So thanks for watching, guys. We're just uh, in lockdown here in Malaysia from the coronavirus. So we've got lots more videos coming. Hopefully one day we'll be back in South Korea. What a blast we had. Thanks for watching everybody. If you want to see more of our videos, our most recent upload is right below me. So you can see what country we're now. Maybe we're still in Malaysia from this lockdown. We'll see how long this lasts. And on the left, some of our other videos. Please subscribe to our channel. Lots of videos coming. We will be traveling for, I mean, a long time. Who knows how long it'll go, but we've got lots of videos coming. So thanks for watching guys.